so to say that this match had, <laughs> to say this tie, this match had everything is an understatement. That gets overused in football quite a lot, but not this time. There was the first time they tried to play the second leg of this match in, in Buenos Aires. There, it was called off because of torrential rain. The second time it was because of River Plate fan violence attacking the Boca Juniors team bus. The only way they could get it done, they decided, was to move it 6,000 miles away to the Santiago Bernabeu, the stadium of Real Madrid. 72,000 fans are in there, a bit of a strange atmosphere in the stadium. This is back in Buenos Aires. But uh, yes, when they did get the game on in the stadium, uh, some, a lot of neutrals in there, but uh, Boca Juniors took the lead in the ties to go three two up that's the stick, sticking tongue out as you as you noted Germana. <laughs> but back came river uh, equalizing uh, uh, in the second half and then this stunning goal put them at, put them ahead this is an extra time and then when river Boca juniors were pushing for an equalizer late in the day they'd committed so many players forward including the goalkeeper this is in the final minute of the match put the icing on the cake for Boca juniors and it was gonzalo martinez who scored the winning goal. Controversy to the end in this one. Uh, Boca Juniors said that River Plate should be kicked out of the tournament. River Plate said that their fans shouldn't be criticised for the, for the small minority that, that did um, cause trouble. And after the match, it was down to the River Plate assistant manager to say that in the end, justice was served. What the players did was also for those people who felt cheated, who can now experience joy. I don't think all our society is violent. It's a minority. There were lots of people at River Stadium who behaved well. They were expecting a show and because of a few people they couldn't have it. So for those people who behaved themselves and were waiting and were patient, they've been brought some joy now by the players and what they've achieved. So very interesting that uh, Boca Juniors couldn't quite get, a, get the better of their, their rivals. And now they go on to uh, play in the FIFA Club World Cup in just a week's time. So what does this mean for this uh, long-standing rivalry? I mean, this year it really feels like it's taken a turn for the much worse, uh, given some of the violence. There was actually physical violence involved uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. So what does this actually mean? What, is it, but what does this mean for the future of Argentinian football in that context, given what happened a couple of weeks ago, uh, is the perception that this is no longer a safe environment to go and support the team that you want to go and cheer on for? Fans uh, don't attend each other's fixtures in, in this one traditionally. Uh, the rules were uh, was trying to be relaxed um, in, um, in, the, in the final with the Copa Libertadores, but uh, they decided to go ahead and, and keep them separate. It was different when it actually got to, to Madrid. but. I think that will continue where the fans of these two teams don't attend. But this is the fiercest rivalry in probably world sport. It's called the Super Classico. We know about El Clasico, Barcelona and Real Madrid. This is a Super Classico. They don't attend each other's fixtures. Can't see that changing any time soon. This is the first time they actually played each other in the final of this competition. But of course, they do play each other in, in the league twice a season. So those are always interesting affairs. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.